Up. I thank you that Holy Spirit is coming and stirring everybody up, Father. I thank you that the eyes of our understanding has been enlightened this week. I thank you for revelation knowledge is coming forth, is changing people's life. And Father, I just ask you right now to give us a heart to understand, give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear exactly what the Spirit would have for us today. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Glory to God, glory to God. I want to tell y'all, you know, I got old Clara, she was up here Monday night. I got to thinking about when we went to Texarkana. We went to Texarkana with her last week for a minister's conference. So uh, she stopped by the store. She wanted us to all have communion that first night. She said, y'all come, come, come to the room and we're going to all take communion this first night together. So we got up there in the room. She pulled out this bottle. We, it looked like grape juice. It was Rocky Road chocolate syrup. <laughs> Rocky Road chocolate syrup. <laughs> oh my lord, we we laughed. I, I bet it took us an hour to take communion, and it probably took us another hour after that to get your breath after eating that stuff. <laughs> we just we just turned it up. <laughs> it did it. I mean, it had a wrapper on it, had vines and all kinds of stuff. It looked like grapes, <clears throat> but. She said, uh, she said, well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I said, well, we ought to be strong because we ain't quit laughing since we got him. We laughed and cried. and Oh, my, we had a blast. I love being with her. It's always a, a fun time to be around her. <clears throat> Let's open up to Numbers 21. Numbers 21. You know, <clears throat> you could, when you're laughing and having a good time like that, you can always tell what kingdom is in manifestation. If the joy, if joy is going on, if there's joy there, it's the manifestation of the kingdom of God. And you know that's that's why that's why it's so so good to just be to make sure you're in peace. You have joy. You know, Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's not what we eat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But if we're in sorrow, that's another kingdom and manifestation in our life. That's the, king, the, the devil and his kingdom. That's the kingdom of darkness that we've already been delivered from. That's why we need to stay in joy. We need to keep our peace. We need to have a righteous consciousness, as Dave was talking last night, so that we'll know that God's kingdom will always be a manifestation everywhere that we go. Everywhere that we go. <clears throat> Something else I was thinking about. We're going to get to Numbers 21 in a second. Psalms 105, 37. Y'all remember when, y'all don't have to flip there if you don't want to, you can write it down. Y'all know when, when Moses led Israel out, out of Egypt, it was anywhere between two to six million people that come out of Egypt. I don't know exactly how many, but you know the population of Mississippi is about three million, three, three and a half million. That tell you how many people come out of, out of Egypt. Psalms 105, 37. You know, Ronnie, he, he confessed it that first night we was up here. He said, we want to see people healed. We want to see miracles. Psalms 105, 37. Everybody that come out of Egypt, out of all three million, three and a half million, however many it was, that come out of Egypt, there was not one person that was weak. There was not one person that was sick. There was not one person that was feeble. You think about, just thinking about the population of Mississippi itself and think about that nobody there being sick. Nobody, nobody in the population being sick. Come on. That's the way God wants us to walk. He wants us, he don't want us to be weak. He don't want us to be feeble. He don't want us to be sick. He wants us to be healthy, alive, and whole. <clears throat> so let's look at Numbers 21. Numbers 21. God is a good God, ain't he? Everybody look at your neighbor and say, God is for me. Now look at him again and say, God is for you. He's not against us, is he? He's for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It ain't a devil in hell. It ain't a principality. It ain't a power. It ain't a sickness. It ain't a demon. It ain't anything. Nothing. No thing can separate us. He is for us. All right, Numbers 21. Let's look at, let's look at verse 4. I'm going to read 4 through 9 here. 
<clears throat> All right, this is uh, verse 4. And they journeyed, they had just, if you read the first couple of verses, they had just defeated Canaan. They had defeated the Canaanites. And verse 4, And they journeyed from Mount Hor to, by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. They had got discouraged. They hadn't seen the promise. They hadn't walked in the promise. They hadn't done everything that God had promised them in the beginning. They hadn't seen it. So they, they had become discouraged. And the people spake against God and against Moses. They were speaking against God and his anointed person that he had in charge. In other words, they were murmuring and complaining. You get to thinking about it. Do we murmur and complain throughout the day? Come on. As we're speaking against God when we murmur and complain. <clears throat> and I'm just telling you, this is some things that put sickness on us, murmuring and complaining. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God, and they spoke against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth, loathes for the, this light bread. They said they didn't have any bread or water. We know they was lying right there because they had manna coming down from heaven. They had the rock. All they had to do was tell that rock to give them some water, and it was giving them water. But they wasn't satisfied. They murmured and complained. And the Lord, because they were murmuring and complaining, it says that the Lord, the Lord thy God, seed time and harvest, you sow this uh, seed of corruption, you're going to reap corruption. They were murmuring and complaining, so seed time and harvest, there was something coming. Come on. <clears throat> and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Because of murmuring and complaining, it said people have died. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they, and they bit the people. And much of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take away these serpents. And Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that has been bitten, when they look upon this fiery serpent that's on the pole, it says that they shall live. And we know from John chapter 3, Jesus quotes this scripture right here. He says that he is that fiery serpent that was on the pole. Yeah. And he said, if you, in other words, he was telling Nicodemus, he said, if you'll look at me, you'll be healed. Or what he was really telling Nicodemus, you'll have eternal life. Eternal life is the life of God. Yeah. It's, it's more than just getting to heaven. It's having the life of God now when we need it in this life. So he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looks upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, brass or bronze, which re represents judgment, and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that... It, if a serpent has bitten any man, when they looked upon this serpent that was on that pole, they lived. Every one that looked at that serpent that was on a pole lived. Every one. And that's what the Lord's wanting us to do today. He's wanting us to live. You know, have we been bitten by a serpent? Have we been bitten by a serpent? At any time in our life, we probably have. We've seen sickness. We've seen cancers. We've seen diseases. We've seen attacks from the enemies. That's what that is. It's a serpent trying to get in our life and bite us or do things to us. It already has bitten us. And he says that he wants to bring us out from everything that, that we've been, even if we brought that destruction on ourselves. Because they brought that destruction on ourselves. They were the ones murmuring and complaining. You know, I get to thinking all the time. It's a lot of people, you know, that uh, request to be healed of cancer, they've been smoking their whole life. You think the Lord's merciful enough to heal somebody that smoked their whole life? Oh, yeah. He's merciful enough. They brought destruction on themselves. He will still heal them. Yep. He will still heal them. He, he keeps covenant with mercy. Yep. He wants to heal people. You know, Psalms 107 20 said he sent his word and healed them, and he delivered them from their own destruction. Yep. We've done things in the past that we can't take back. He's still merciful enough to heal us for every past mistake we made. Yep. And he'll do it today. 
First Kings eight fifty six. I'm gonna read a couple of verses here. First Kings eight fifty six says, "Well, I guess I better flip it around." First Kings eight fifty six. I know what part of it says. It's a pretty long one. Eight fifty six. Blessed be the God who has given rest to His people according to all that He has promised. He's promised us rest. There has not one failed word. There has not one word of all of his promises ever failed, which he has promised by the hand of Moses. Amen. Amen. Not one of his words has ever failed him. Not one of his promises has ever failed him. Every one of his promises are yes and amen to the glory of God yeah. in Christ Jesus, as David was talking about last night. In Christ. That's why we need to know who we are in Christ. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen to the glory of God in Christ. Yeah. Who we are now. That's our new identification. All of God's promises are yes and amen. And not one of His promises, not one of His promises have failed us. Not one. <clears throat> Jeremiah 1.12 says that He watches over His Word. He watches over His Word. And he hastens to perform it. He wants to perform it quickly. He watches over his word so that he can perform it in your life. He watches over Isaiah 53. Jesus has borne our sickness. He has carried our pains. And with his stripes we are healed. God watches over that word. He's wanting you to get it inside of you. He's wanting us to get this word inside of us. He's wanting us to get it inside of us so that he can perform it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He's got to have something to work with. Ezekiel 12, 25 says, The Lord has spoken the word, and he will surely bring it to pass. He spoke the word, and he will bring it to pass. I'm telling you, I don't have time to read all the promises of God. <laughs> we could sit in here all night, and we might, get, we might get through Genesis covering some of the promises of God. But he will bring it to pass. Whatever it is that we're believing for, if we're believing for our kids to be delivered, if we're believing for health, if we're believing to come out of a financial struggle that we've been in, whatever it is, whatever he has promised us, he will not fail. He will not fail to bring it to pass in your life. He's watching over it so that he can perform it in our life. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 says, Lord... Let's, let's look. It's a, it's a long one, too. I'm trying to think how much I want to cover. Isaiah 55. I know it says his word won't, won't return unto him void. Let's see. Verse 11. He says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But his word will accomplish everything whereunto he has sent it. Everything that he has sent his word to do in our life. We read Psalms 107.20. He sent his word to heal us. He sent his word to heal us. And to deliver us from our destruction. And his word won't return unto him void. But his word will accomplish that which he has sent it forth to do. And it will prosper in every area whereunto he has sent it. Y'all believe it? <clears throat> yeah. The problem is we don't take him at his word. Yeah. We don't we don't believe that he can hold his end of the covenant up. That's sad to say. Psalms 119, verse 89 says that his word is forever settled in heaven. It's time for us to get it settled in our heart and start believing it. And quit being quit uh flip-flopping back and forth. Well, maybe it ain't his will. Maybe it is his will. We can't be like that. We've got to make up our mind. As, as Joshua said, we've got to make up our mind today. Choose this day. Choose this day whom we're going to serve. Who are you going to put your trust in? Who are we going to put our trust in? <clears throat> we need to make, make up our mind today to, to know who we're going to serve. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, it says, Where the word of a king is, there's power. Where the word of the king is, there's power. You know, Dave, last night, he was talking about confessing the Scripture. Confessing the Scripture. By your stripes I am healed. By your stripes I am healed. Is that our word or is that his word? It is. That's his word. So every time we confess that word out of our mouth, his word out of our mouth, there's power. Yeah. There's dynamic power 
dynamite power available right there. Every time we confess that word out of our mouth, where the word of a king is, there's power. Yeah. Jesus, you said in your word that by your stripes I am healed. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be bold in our confession of faith. We can't back down and cower down. We've got to be bold in our confession of faith and know what we believe in and not be wavered, not be moved by what everybody else is telling us or circumstances that are trying to rise up. Because you better believe when you start trying to trying to teach on healing or whatever. I remember the first time I started teaching on healing, first thing I did, I was getting sick. I'm like, my Lord, is this right? Is this true? <laughs> I'm telling you, the devil comes immediately to steal the word out of your heart. Yeah. If we preach healing, God's going to come and manifest healing to us. We preach salvation, He's going to come give us salvation. If we preach deliverance, He's going to give us deliverance. He wants to manifest His Word, but if the devil comes and steals that Word out of our heart, there's not going to be anything there to manifest. Yeah. He wants to manifest His Word to us. That's what we're saying. He's watching over His Word so that He can perform it in your life. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Man, that, whoo, Lord have mercy. That's powerful there in itself. You know, because his word, it ain't lost no power. It's just as powerful coming out of your mouth as it is his. That's it. I heard old Charles Cat say one time, he was praying to the Lord, and the Lord told him, he says, and it may have been Kenneth E. Hagen, I can't remember who it was. It was one of them too. He says, my word hasn't lost its power. He says, but my church has lost its, its speech. Come on. They're not putting any voice to the word. Yeah, That's what Psalms 103 verse 19 and 20 is telling us to put a voice to his word. He put his word on this earth to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We've got to sow seeds if we want to harvest. And we've got to do some speaking. We've got to confess that word. By your stripes I am healed. My child shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. I will not die. Like Clara was saying, she fell on the floor. She had a stroke and fell on that floor. What was the first thing she was saying? I shall, live. I shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. And I will declare the works of the Lord. She didn't call it like it was. She called it like she wanted to see it. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. we got to quit getting in agreement with, with the world, with the doctor's report, and start getting in, in agreement with the word. Yeah. We've got to get in agreement with what he says because what he says is powerful. It carries the power to deliver. Yeah. It is the anointed word of God. That's what Isaiah 27, 11 says. The anointing shall break the yoke. The anointing shall destroy the yoke. It ain't just going to break, it, break that sickness off of you. He says that he's going to destroy it so that it can never come back. Mm. Nahum 1 and 9, affliction shall not arise a second time in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> but we we get caught up in traditions, you know. We hear we hear people say instead of going to the word and finding out ourselves, we hear people say that God puts sick, sickness on us to keep us humble, to keep us broke, to so that He can be glorified. I tell you, we've heard it all. If you ever get on social media and see people on there preaching, Lord have mercy, it'll just about discourage you. Yeah, like, man, what kind of what what in the world? We heard it in that song while ago. Jesus went to the whipping post before he went to that cross. Yeah. Did he go to the cross for us? Yeah. He Everybody went to the whipping post on the way. <clears throat> now, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was, he was already shedding his blood. He was already shedding his blood. He was, he was stressed out, praying, praying so hard. Uh, blood vessels in his head was busting open and he was bleeding. His blood was already shed. And he said, Father, if it be your will, he said, let this cup go ahead and pass from me. And we'll go ahead. In other words, he was asking God, can I go ahead and die? Do I have to go to the cross? I've already shed my blood. Can I go ahead and die now? The Lord said, no, not yet. We've got some, uh, some other places to go. He knew that Jesus needed to go to that whipping post. He knew Isaiah 53. He had to go to that whipping post before he could go to that cross so that he could pay the debt for us to be healed. Yeah. Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, 24, Exodus 15, 26, Matthew 8, 17. By his stripes, we were healed. Yeah. Did he go to the cross in vain? Yeah. Well, he didn't go to the whipping post in vain either. That's right. I'm not going to allow that. I'm going, I'm going to walk in everything that he paid for us to walk in. And yeah. we all need to. You know, it's a, it's a shame that, we, that, that 
people don't even want to walk in everything that he bought and paid for us to walk into. And a lot of it, a lot of it goes back to us not getting in the Word. Yep. We're not getting in the Word and people preaching the wrong thing. It's sad. Traditions of man make the Word of God of no effect. Yeah. Traditions of God, tra traditions of man, I'm sorry, bring the Word of God of no effect. You know, you get to thinking about traditions. I heard somebody preaching uh, here a while back, and uh, <clears throat> this girl grew up, and in the house, every Thanksgiving, they would cook this big bread. They would get this big, big loaf of bread, they'd cut the ends off of it, and they'd put it in the oven. Boy, that's the that best bread you could get, she said. Well, 14, 15 years rocked on, 18-year-old, eight, she moved out. Every Thanksgiving, that's what she seen her mama do, cut the ends off. She seen her mama cutting the ends off of that bread, both sides of that bread. She just got married. She called her mama. She said, we're having a Thanksgiving uh, lunch over here. Y'all want to come over here and eat? She said, yeah, we'll be over there. Well, of course, the mama got there early. She wanted to help her, help her daughter cook. So the, doc, the mama went in there, and that girl pulled out, pulled out that bread just like her mama did. She cut the ends off of it. She said, what'd you do that for? She said, I, that's what you've always done. That's what we've always done. We've always cut the ends off, off of our bread. She said, yeah, but my pan was a lot smaller than yours is too. <laughs> <laughs> we get so caught up doing things we see other people do and saying what we hear other people say, and we don't know why, why they do it, so therefore we just do it anyway. Come on. We hear somebody say that God ain't going to put on us more than we can bear. Therefore, before we know it, that's what we're confessing. <laughs> that ain't what the Word says. Come on. We think that we're supposed to glory in tribulation. We're supposed to glory in, in uh, sickness and stuff like that. Because we heard somebody else say it. That's tradition. It's time we put an end to tradition. we got a bigger pan now. Yeah, come on. <laughs> this, we got a bigger pan now. i tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> we was... One of our buddies, he's actually a preacher. I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, we could, but well, I guess that narrowed it down a pretty good bit, didn't it? <laughs> he just become the head deacon of a church up around our house, and uh, I'm going to say it, yeah. <clears throat> he just become a head deacon up there, up there at another church around the house. So it was. He he got to make some some big decisions and stuff as the, for the church and stuff like that. So he went up to some of the other deacons. He said, "He said, let's wait and take up uh, the tithe and offering at the end of the service instead of at the beginning." So sure enough, at the at the end of the service, like everybody's looking at the beginning, everybody's looking like, "What's going on?" <laughs> at the end of the service, they took up the offering. Boy, all the mother deacons boy, that that had just come off the board and stuff like that. Boy, they, what are you doing? We've always done this and that. Come to find out, he wasn't at that church but about two more weeks, and he had to get out. <laughs> They don't got set in their ways. <laughs> oh my lord! <clears throat> but how how can we believe believe for God to heal us if we believe that He's the one that's got us going through something? That, that's sobering right there. You know, we we believe that it's God's will for us to go through this tribulation. For us to be sick during this time, for us to have this disease, or for us to lose a child, we believe that it's, the, it's God's will for us to go through that. How can we ask God to heal us if we think He's the one that, that's put that on us, or that He's the one that got us going through that? We can't pray a prayer of faith if we're unsure why we're going through something. If who, He put it on us, if the devil put it on, put us on, put it on us, we've got to pray the prayer of faith. If we don't know who's doing what, we can't pray a prayer of faith. <clears throat> Y'all getting anything out of this? Oh, yeah. Well, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. First John 5, 14. Well, I'm going to start with verse 13. Hmm. Come on. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Glory to God. I don't even know where I'm at on my notes. First John 5, we're going to start verse 13. Alright. 
He says, These things I have written unto you that you should believe on the name of the Son of God, that we should have faith in the name of Jesus. Mm. That you would know and that you would have eternal life and that you would believe on the name of the Son of God. He said that two times in that one passage, that we should have faith in Jesus' name. My Lord have mercy. No wonder P Peter, P Peter and John could look at that man at the gate called Beautiful and say, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Yeah. Because they had faith in the name. This is the same John that was there with Peter. He had faith in the name of Jesus. I tell you, actually, when you look at, at John chapter 21, he says that he wrote it. His epistle, or his gospel, according to the book of John, he says he wrote that book so that we would have faith in the name. He says, he says I could write a book and we could read it for the rest of, the rest of our life. It wouldn't be big enough to contain all the miracles that Jesus did. But he said, what I have wrote to you, he says, I wrote it so that you would have faith in the name of Jesus. My Lord, if we would get a revelation of that, yeah. it, everything that's in that name, that's why we pray in that name. There were new ankles in that name in Acts chapter uh, 3. There were brand new ankles in that name. Yeah. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have, I give unto you in the name. I give, I give you some brand new ankles in the name of Jesus because there were new ankles in that name. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus because that's, that's the answer. That's where all our answers are at. That's where our deliverance is. That's where our healing is. That's the name that's above every name. My Lord. All right, verse 14. I was about to get sidetracked. 1 John 5, 14. He says, and this is the confidence. What was, what was Claire saying Monday night? She said, we need to have a confident faith. That was the last thing that she said, I believe. We need to have a confident faith. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What if we don't pray according to his will? What if we don't know his will? Come on. He says if we pray anything according to his will, he hears us. And if, and if we know that he hears us, if we got faith to know that he hears our prayers, it says that whatever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we have desired of him. I can't tell you how many times we they tried to uh, make beer legal in Carthage or outside of Carthage, I mean, in Lee County up here. They always bring in these petitions up and sign in these petitions. We need a thousand signatures. He says if we know that he hears our prayers, we have a petition. A petition changes things. Mm -hmm. It's going to change your situation. It's going to change your circumstance. When you, have, when you pray a prayer of faith, knowing that he hears you. Yeah. We got to, that's why it's important for us to know that He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered. He wants, he wants us for a thousand generations after you. Yeah. A thousand generations after me. He wants every one of us healed, delivered, prospered. Yeah. For a thousand generations. You think about that. Lord, how far would that be? My Lord, have mercy. I don't even know if my lineage goes up. A thousand <laughs> generations or however you'd say that. Mm. You know, when you... This is the confidence that we have. That's what it's telling us. We'll have a confident prayer yeah. when we know He hears us. And that's, that's why Dave was up here acting like a wild man last night. <laughs> he was up here getting loud. I mean, when, you, when you're sitting here praying like, like we were saying, Jesus... Took my infirmities. He bore my sickness. Yeah. He carried my pains. Come on. You, sometimes you will get bold. Sometimes you will get loud. Yeah. And it don't. It don't always have to be like that. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it will. That's just. We've got to know that we're the righteousness of God in Christ. It goes back to identity, like Dave was saying last night. We've got to know who we are in Christ. You know, in Proverbs twenty-eight, verse one, it actually says that the righteous. Are bold as a lion. Yep. We ain't gonna back down. Whether whether something's already got on us or something got on our kids, we ain't backing down. No. Nope. And we ain't gonna put up with it either. Come on. With the righteous are bold as a lion. We're going to attack it. <clears throat> I heard somebody preaching last week talking about bulldog faith. So <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> what are you talking about? Some bulldog faith. 
And they said, you notice how a bulldog's nose curves up? That, that way when they grab a hold to the promise, they can still breathe. They won't let go. <laughs> so when they got it, they can still breathe the whole time. That I ain't letting go of it. I ain't letting go of my promise. That's my promise. He bought and paid for us to walk in health, to walk in divine healing. It's time for us to have some bulldog faith and not let go of it. Come on. That's, the, that's fighting the good fight of faith. Yeah. That's fighting the good fight of faith. <clears throat> i tell you what. Let's look at Romans chapter 1. Talking about righteousness. You know, fruit, a fruit of righteousness is healing. Yeah. When, you, when you're in right standing with God, it'll produce a fruit inside of you, which is healing. Yeah. That's 1 Peter 2, 24 right there. I like to talk about righteousness. My Lord have mercy. It gets people healed. Yes. It gets people healed, I promise you. Well, you've seen it. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 16 and 17. I don't know how long we're going to stay here. But he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed of the good news. Come on. He says, For it, the good news gospel, he says, For it is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. But it says, The gospel is the power of God unto deliverance, unto salvation. Unto welfare, unto provision, so serita. I, I believe it. Ain't that right, Dave? Something like that. Or, and I know it's sozo, it comes off of sozo, but it's the longer word, salvation. Look that word up, salvation, there. It is the power of God unto somebody being delivered. When we're up here preaching the gospel, that means it's the power of God to somebody being healed, to somebody being delivered right there by preaching the gospel. It says, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To everyone that has faith. Anybody in here got faith? Yeah. We got faith. And it is the power of God. This gospel that we preach is the power of God to us. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, for in there, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The righteousness of God is revealed when we're preaching the gospel. That right standing with God is revealed when we preach the gospel. Right stand, having a right to healing, having a right to salvation, having a right to partake of all these things that he's paid for. That's why we preach the gospel. To impart revelation in the people, to show them that they can have this life. That they don't have to die and go to hell. That their kids don't have to struggle with these things. That's why we preach the gospel. Because it's the power of God. Glory to God. Let's see. <clears throat> James chapter 1. I feel like I'm just all over the place. Preaching four messages up here. I'll, like I throw it in a blender and just... It'd be all right. <clears throat> so we need to make up our mind and know God's will and have faith in it and believe it. James chapter 1 verse 6. It's right after Hebrews and right before First Peter. But let him ask in faith how we going to ask in faith if we don't know what we're asking for that he even paid for? He says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers. In other words, if we're, if we're doubting one minute if we're, and if we're believing the next. Because I'm going to tell you that our next, when we walk out this door, we're going to have the opportunity to doubt. We're going to have the opportunity probably before we leave this room to doubt. For he that wavers... Is like a wave of the sea driven with wind, tossed to and fro. Tossed to and fro. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So he says, if we're wavering in our faith, we're going to believe on Sundays, but Monday through Monday through Friday, we're not going to believe. And Saturday night, we're just, we're just going to be a little mediocre. 
No. He says, if he says, if you're wavering, you won't receive anything of the Lord. That's why we got to have confident faith, knowing that He hears our prayers, knowing that He is the Lord thy God that healeth thee, knowing that Jesus has borne our sickness and carried our pains, and with His stripes we are healed, and knowing that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be delivered. We've got to know these things. And if we don't know, and we're praying back and forth, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's Your will. Yes, Lord, I know it's Your will today. Oh, I just don't know. I just don't know. He says that's way. We're not putting us putting ourselves in a position or aligning ourselves up to where we can receive of the Lord. He says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, because if he does waver, he's like a wave tossed to and fro in the sea by the wind. Let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. And he says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He says, if we're believing one minute and doubting the next, we're unstable. You know, <clears throat> In Mark chapter 11, uh, Jesus had uh, cursed a fig tree. We all know this story. He cursed a fig tree. It wasn't producing any fruit. He was hungry. He was going, going to town. He cursed his fig tree, and they went on. And then the next day, they come back by. Peter, big mouth Peter, said, Look, Master, look. In other words, he didn't, he didn't believe it when he said it. He had to wait till he seen it. Because he was still in the sight realm. Because the first thing that he said was, Look. We don't walk by sight. We don't walk by what it looks like. We walk by faith. <clears throat> he says, look, Master, this tree that you cursed yesterday withered away. And Jesus, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, I don't know what, what your mountain is today. It might be cancer. It might be dead. It might be something going on in your kid's life. But he says, if you will speak to that mountain, that that mountain should obey you. It says, have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. And it says, if we won't doubt in our heart, that's the wavering, that's the wavering right there. As long as we don't doubt in our heart. I know thoughts come through. Thoughts come through. That's okay. That's, that's not your heart up here. That's your head. But like Dave was talking last night, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we've got, to, we've got to cast down these imaginations. We've got to cast down all these things. That's, that's where the devil's going after it. That's his battlefield right there. That's where he's going to set up strongholds. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10, for the weapons of all warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God so that we can pull down strongholds and it says what those strongholds it says casting down imaginations if we have all these imaginations I just don't know if my kids are going to make it through college I just don't know if I'm going to make it till I'm 80 years old I don't know if I can pay my bills this week all these imaginations just running through your head yeah. can become a stronghold for the devil to attack God Yeah. because you're living below what God ordained you uh, created you to walk in if you're, if you're entertaining all these thoughts letting them stay there you know, like that's that's that is warfare right there. Like Dave was saying last night, I know. He, like I, I told him last night, I said, I said, you preach my message. I said, <laughs> I said my whole message is shot. I got it till tomorrow, and I got to work all day tomorrow, and then come up here and preach. That's why I keep saying Dave said this and Dave said that. He preached my message. <laughs> you you think he you think he preaches with me all the time? But uh, like Dave was saying last night, that's warfare right there. The devil is revelation knowledge. Yeah. The devil trying to keep you from getting revelation knowledge. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter four, it says, "If our gospel be hid, Come on. this good news that we're preaching, remember the good news that we're preaching from Romans chapter one that has the power to deliver people, to heal people, to set people free, to save people. Yeah. That good news gospel we preach. He says in Second Corinthians chapter four. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, has blinded their minds so that they can't even see it. He won't allow them to get revelation of it. He don't want them to get revelation. But it didn't stop there. He said, unless the light of the glorious gospel would shine unto them. 
He's defeated when we get revelation of him. He's defeated. He's already defeated, but he's under our feet when we get a revelation of who we are in Christ and that, that he, he bought, Jesus bought and paid for us to be healed, delivered, and set free. To live in the provision of God. To walk in that kingdom of God authority. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> Glory to God. It's time to, it's time to pick, a, pick and choose which side you're going to be on. <clears throat> Let's see. You know, something else to think about. Got to thinking about this. If we think that God put something on us, or we're up that God is allowing us to go through this tribulation, if God's put this sickness on us, or allowing us to go through this sickness for a season in our life, why do we go to the doctor? And I'm not down with doctors. We need doctors. I love them. I'm thankful for them. But if we think that it's God's will for us to for us to go through these things, the first thing that we do is we go to a doctor and we're trying to get out of his will. If if, if it's God's will for us to, to go through this, hey, let's man up and just take it. You know what I mean? But it's not. It's not his will for us to go through these things. Yeah. That's why Jesus went to that whipping post so that we, we, we wouldn't have to. He borne our sickness and carried our pains. Where did he carry them to? He took them to the lowest pit yeah. and dropped them off so that we wouldn't have to carry them. <clears throat> Acts 10.38 says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power. And it says that Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And that's what Jesus did when he walked this earth. He was anointed by God so that he could go heal the sick, so he could go raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received, freely you must give. You know, he, he even said in John chapter 6, he said, I didn't come to do my will. Yeah. I come to do the will of him that sent me. So if you want to know God's will for your life, look at what Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And that, Peter tells us in Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It's not God's will for us to be oppressed by the devil. It's not his will for us to be oppressed by the devil. It's not his will. That's right. It's his will for us to be healed and delivered. That's why he sent Jesus. Yeah. John 10, 10, there ain't no gray area right here. He says, the thief, this is red letters. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come. Jesus said that he came so that we could have the life of God and have the life of God more abundantly. My goodness. That'll make that get you fired up right there, knowing that you can have the life of God, the Zoe life, right now. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, 61. Dave quoted this one last night too. <laughs> It says that every sickness, every disease, all of these things that are not even, that hadn't even been recorded yet. We hear of new diseases about every day. He says even if they hadn't been recorded yet, it says they're under the curse. They're a curse. What did Jesus do? He took that curse. He became the curse so that we wouldn't have to be cursed. Yeah. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. We need to identify what we're, what we're going through right now. Who's it of? Is it of the devil or is it of God? There ain't no gray area. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Is it stealing our joy? Is it stealing our finances? Is it killing somebody? Who's it of? It ain't of God. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. With whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. God can't give you a bad gift. He ain't going to give you cancer. He ain't going to give you an incurable disease. We got to know, we got to identify where the, the source so that we'll know how to pray. So if we'll know that we're praying the right thing so that we can pray a prayer of faith. Because if we think God's putting something on us, we're not going to pray a prayer of faith. We're not going to try to get rid of this cancer or disease or whatever we're going to do. If we're thinking that God, God has put it on us. <clears throat> I want to encourage all of you to read Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. If you'll start in verse 15, he starts uh, listing all the curses. This is the curse that we've been redeemed from. Yeah. 
Deuteronomy 28, he starts in verse 15, and he starts listing all these curses. You know, the curse of the law is it, you could put all three of them in, uh, I mean, all of it in about three categories. The three categories would be spiritual death, it'd be sickness, and poverty. The, every curse of the law could fall under those three categories. And he's telling us in Galatians chapter 3 that that's what we've been redeemed from. Yeah. Spiritual death or sin. We've been redeemed from sin. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, that God made Jesus to be our sin who knew no sin so that we could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's a law of identification. That's a spiritual law. Spiritual law that governs everything. He identified, it's called the law of identification. He identified with sin. He identified with us so that we could identify with him. Yeah. That's what 1 John 4, 17 says. <clears throat> he identified with sin so that we could identify with his righteousness. <clears throat> that don't mean he, sin he did sin. When it says that he became sin, that don't mean he... He, he did sin. It means that he just identified with it. <clears throat> and sickness, we know he identified with sickness. Isaiah 53, he bore our sickness, carried our pains. With his stripes were healed. So he identified with sickness so that we could identify with healing. Poverty, he identified with poverty. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says. He became poor so that we could become rich. And it's not just talking about spiritual, uh, being spiritually rich either. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. It's talking about finances. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's look at John chapter 3. I'm going to show you all something else. Good gosh. Where did the clock go? My Lord. <laughs> I should be done. 9. What did y'all say? 9.30? You good? <laughs> Y'all getting anything out of this? Good. It builds your faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. A lot of this you done heard one time, you're going to hear it again. And I promise you, if I get invited back, it won't be the last time. <laughs> we like to build our faith. We don't, we don't have a victory because we heard it one time. And a faith is the victory that overcomes this world. Let's see. John chapter 3. Let's see. I'm going to start in verse 12 right here. And uh, right here, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, and he's quoting what we read earlier in Numbers 21 about the fiery serpent on the pole. Let's see. John chapter 3. I'm going to start in verse 12, just read a couple verses here. He says, If I have told you of these earthly things and you, and you don't believe, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man shall ascend to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. He says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, this is Numbers 21, as he lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, even so must I, the Son of Man, be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's what he was telling us in John uh, in uh, Numbers 21. If we, would, if we would behold that serpent on a pole, that was a type and shadow of Jesus. If a type and shadow of Jesus would heal them in, back in the Old Testament, how much more would Jesus himself heal us if we would look at him? Yeah. He, is, he, he was that serpent on the pole. And really, you know, the serpent I, identified as the devil or whatever, he's, and, every, and the works of the devil, is saying that he identified with all of that. It's not, and he became sin. That's what he's talking about in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He became all these things. He became all of that. And he put every bit of it on the cross. Everything that was against us, he put it on the cross and nailed it too. Yeah. <clears throat> That whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have eternal life. So is he talking about just being saved and going to heaven? He's talking about healing too, because that's what he was talking about when Moses said all this, when God said it to Moses. He's talking about healing. 
He's talking about salvation. He's talking about the package deal when you give your life to Jesus. <clears throat> Let's see. Glory to God. Romans 8.32. It says that God did not spare his own son. If he didn't spare his own son, wouldn't he now freely give us all things? Me and Dave done a, a Greek Bible study on that word all. It's A-L-L. -L, just to see what it meant. We, we looked through the whole Bible and every time it said A-L-L, -L, all. To see what it meant. You know what it meant? Hey, Elliot, it meant all. <laughs> it meant everything. It meant everything. So if he's going to freely give us all things, would he give you healing? Would he give you deliverance? Would he give you a breakthrough? He didn't spare his son. He put him on that pole up there for you. If you can't say amen, say oh me. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. We're going we're gonna to land this baby right here. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. He said, Whosoever should believe with only should have eternal life. That's what he was telling Nicodemus right there. We're going to get there in a minute. Hebrews chapter 11. You know... We may not need healing right now. But somebody, you might come across somebody in your family that does. It might be a time when you wake up in the middle of the night, your baby's got 102 fever. Your grandbaby's got 102 fever. What you going to do? In the name of Jesus, I command this fever to go down. <clears throat> and I'm, that's why we're doing this. Maybe, maybe it ain't far right now. But it might be for a time to come. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, hope is something that stays out there in the future. Well, I hope I do get healed. Well, I hope I do get delivered. I hope my kids are set free. I hope, I hope, I hope. That's, what, that's out there in the future. But he said that faith is the substance to everything that you're hoping for. So if you if you got faith in everything that you're hoping for, you've got the substance to every, sitting there, everything right there. If you're believing for your healing, that if you're hoping for your healing, you know you got to have that hope first. We're gonna do a message on hope one day, but you got to have hope. Hope ain't nothing wrong with hope, but you got to believe in that. And when you believe in it, it says that you've got the substance to it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you're hoping for your healing, you need to be believing for your healing too. So that you'll have so that you'll have the substance to everything that you're believing for. It's and hope hope is not the same as faith. <clears throat> in the Amplified Classic, uh, I don't know if y'all have ever read that, in the Amplified Classic version, it, it says that faith is the title deed to that which you're hoping for. You know, if, if we go buy a vehicle or we have a vehicle that's paid for and that title deed gets transferred over into our name. If we've got the title deed, we've got, got that vehicle. And that's what he's telling us. If we've got the title deed, he transferred that title of healing over to us and put, that, put our name on that title. If we've got faith, we've got the title deed. If we've got that title deed, that's our healing. That's what he's done for us. Yeah. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, with without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Not he was, he is. See, he, he is, I am. That's what he told Moses, I am. He didn't say I was, he said I am. That's what a lot of us look at him, the way that we look at him now is I was. That's not who he is. I feel like I've been preaching to you all night. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me pick you out over here. <laughs> I get somebody that'll, that'll keep up with me in my eyes and I just preach to them all night. <laughs> I'm going to get over him. <laughs> now, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yeah. I'm telling you, he wants to reward us. He wants to load us daily with his benefits. Every day. 
Look at uh, Ephesians 1.19 right quick. This is a powerful prayer to, to pray right here too. In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, you can really start in verse 17 through 23 right here. Pray this prayer over yourself. Claim this prayer. It's a prayer for, that you would get a revelation. Uh, not That you would have revelation knowledge or stuff. We pray it all the time. <clears throat> but in verse 19, this is what Paul prays. He says, that we would get a revelation of the exceeding greatness of God's power to us who believe. When you have faith, let me continue. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power that he worked in Christ. So when you have faith or when you believe everything that was worked in Christ is at work in you right now. If you have faith right now, if you're believing, it says that everything that was worked in Christ, you know, he went to the lowest bit. He took that sin. He took that uh, disease. He took everything. He was actually, if you look at Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2, it says that he was under the dominion of angels when he was in the lowest pit of hell. He took all of that. But when it was worked in him, he busted the gates of hell wide open and stripped yeah. the devil of all power and authority and took the keys. Yeah. And it says that that's at work in you when you have faith. That's at work in you right now if you're believing. Yeah. The power of God is at work in you right now if you're believing. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have a song y'all was going to play? All right. <clears throat> Everything that was worked in Christ is at work in you right now. We're going to give an altar call in just a minute. And if you're, if you're not fully convinced right now, I believe that God's going to be merciful enough anyway. If you want to come have hands laid on you, you know at Mark 16, it says, Go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believeth not is damned. It says that these signs shall follow them that believe. The last 11 words that come out of Jesus' mouth says, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's the last 11 words come out of his mouth, according to Mark. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Do y'all believe that we can lay hands on the sick and watch them recover? Yeah. That's, God's going to meet you where you're at tonight. I'm telling you, whatever it is, whatever you're believing for, we can get up here and get an agreement. It don't have to be for healing. If you're believing for your kids... Healing, hey, we had a woman come to the revival. I know Dave said this last night too. I'm, on, I'm not ever going to preach another revival after Dave. <laughs> the, the <night> of, <laughs> but we had a woman, and I talk to this, she comes in the store all the time. We had a woman come to the store, and her daughter was had been, she had had HIV and hepatitis C for 15, 20 years maybe, and had a had a baby in her womb, but the baby was dead. They were in the hospital. They were going in the next morning to take this baby out of her. They were going to have to cut this baby out of her because it was, it was a dead baby. She woke up that next morning. We, we, that night before, this woman come up to the altar. She said, I want y'all to get in agreement with me. Matthew 18, 19. If any two of you will agree on anything, touch me. They can have it. If any two of us would agree on any one thing tonight, touch me. We can have it. She said, I want y'all to get in agreement with me that, that, my, uh, that my daughter's baby won't, won't be dead in the morning. Like, oh, Lord, have mercy. You have asked a hard thing. <laughs> but, you, but we can have all things if we believe. Yeah. You know, we got to be willing to get stretched, stretched yeah. out. But he met us where we were right there. We said a prayer of faith over her. She come to that revival the next night. Boy, she was lit up. Chet, like, where are y'all at? Where are they at? Boy, she chased us down, come to find us. She said, I want y'all to know that my daughter woke up that next morning. They were doing the blood work, getting ready to take the baby out of her, the dead baby out of her. That baby was alive, was healed of hepatitis C. She was healed of HIV because of a prayer of agreement. My God. I'm telling you, he's... He's going to meet us where we at tonight too. Anything that anybody needs, needs some prayer for or get in agreement on, if it's whatever it is, I'm going to open the altar of me and Dave. My brother, <clears throat> we'll get in agreement with you. I'll turn my mic off too so we won't be up here. <laughs> <laughs>